नमस्कार हेलो एंड वंस अगेन वेलकम टू सीआईटी एंड सीआरटीज लाइव फोन एंड इंटरैक्टिव प्रोग्राम माय नेम इज तन्वी खुराना एंड इन दिस इकोनॉमिक्स क्लास फॉर ऑल द 12th क्लास स्टूडेंट्स वी आर हियर विद द टॉपिक ह्यूमन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन वेल व्हाट इज दिस टॉपिक व्हाट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड बाय ह्यूमन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन वील बी गेटिंग टू नो ऑल द आंसर्स फ्रॉम आवर एक्सपर्ट हु इज प्रेजेंट इन आवर स्टूडियो एंड शी विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग एवरीथिंग अबाउट इट and uh, if you're watching us on pme with your channel number 12 you will get to know all the answers which you have in your mind and you can raise your questions you can call us on our number which is 8800440559 if you want to email us the email id would be dth.class12 @ciit.nic.in there's one more medium through which you can connect with us you can ask your questions and that is our youtube channel ncert official in the live chat box raise your questions write down your questions and we'll be taking it up towards the end of our program and uh, we'll have this conversation for one hour till 4 o'clock our expert is going to be here with our studio so let me introduce her to all of you she is miss sandhya arora a very warm welcome to you ma'am thank you so much namaskar namaskar Ma'am is an academic coordinator from Manav Rachna International School, Sector 46, Guru Gram. And uh, let's just start this discussion without wasting any more time, and let's ask her what are we going to discuss in this particular session, in this particular topic, and also basically what do we understand by human capital formation? So, ma'am. Right. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And today's topic is human capital formation. I have prepared a small PPT, a very basic one. We'll be sharing that along with, and uh, the PPT on screen. Once we start with the human capital formation, there are some things to begin with, to start with, which we almost are aware of. If we commence with the economic growth, we have already studied economic growth in our previous topics, in our previous chapter. Hence, a little recap. economic growth is when we increase the real income when there is a increase in the real national income of a country we call that as economic growth physical capital is the inputs physical inputs which are required for further production it could be plant building machinery uh, factories etc raw material etc human capital is the skill with which the human acquires as in gets expertise and improves the production process it can be acquired through education through training through experience etc it add some values to the production process now we starting with the actual topic that is human capital formation human capital formation is basically a process where we invest in human resource now this human resource is the human the people to increase the skill knowledge and production abilities now when when we talk about human capital formation human capital formation basically is development of this ability and skill right and when there is human capital formation there is there is simulation that is innovation happens the invention happens and the technological abilities to adapt new things also happens there are four 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 sources of uh, human capital one we invest in the education investment in health investment in on job training migration and information okay ma'am uh, if we want to understand what are the benefits of investing in these many things what will that be right so if we talk about investment in uh, education mm -hmm. when there is better education there will be increase in income there will be increase in standard of living if we invest in health the people who are healthy will be more productive when they are more productive they will be increasing the production so production ability of the enterprises increases okay. if we talk about on job training say for example if i am trained on a theoretical basis that is only in the classroom and in second option if i am given a training in the factory on at the floor where will i learn more obviously on the job training when there is on the job training the efficiency of people increases the efficiency of human resource increases and they stay up to date with what is happening in the recent times 
and that also improves their efficiency right along with that we have next as migration migration with migration the income in the migrated places of the people who migrated that increases and information basically helps people to take the decisions on how to invest in health services where to invest and so on these were the sources let's discuss each one of them in detail talking about the first investment that is investment in education right so a small question who will earn better a person who is skilled educated or the person who is illiterate and is unskilled the person who is educated and uh, has skills right and a person who is having skills and is educated is having higher earning capacity because of because uh, he is trained right. and he has skills perfect so see when a person is skilled that person is able to produce better right. when a person is able to produce better goods and services and is employable mm. the production capacity of that enterprise who is employing such a person will increase mm. hence important it is very important to invest in education Right. right along with that it's not just getting employed is getting better when we are when we are better educated we are able to give back to society better hmm. for example when i am educated i probably am aware when i should be vaccinated and when i should be taking rest when i should be quarantined so that i don't spread the infection somewhere outside yes. if the training happens on time hmm. the skills are acquired the awareness is created on time it benefits the society in more than one way this is benefits of education now how do we measure it see measuring tools for education could be years of schooling mm. it could be teacher pupil ratio enrollment rates but not necessarily that when it is better years of schooling the quality of education is also getting better right. this is not directly related hence educated workforce is definitely facilitating the new technologies and is improving the efficiency of the economy moving on to the next slide which is investment in health we did talk about it a little that the person who is probably is is not unwell is well is having is well nutrition is healthy will be providing better in the economy will be providing more goods and services in the economy right mm -hmm. so when a person who is healthy will be increasing the sub, the production right now expenditure on investment if i talk about expenditure on health if i talk about mm. this investment could be of four types one it's a preventive medicine like vaccination which happens so that we don't fall ill it could be polio vaccination drive one example now if i'm already ill and when the medical intervention is needed to make me healthy that vaccination and that health service will basically will be curative service right okay. now we create awareness before eating your food you should be washing your hand mm. after going to loo you should be actually washing your bum as well mm. now this awareness when is created such awareness is helping the society in totality for getting better mm. that creation of toilets avoiding the clean the swachh bharat abhiyan the clean india mission is actually making our country healthy with this particular measure with investment in health services <coughs> along with that providing clean water and providing for better sanitation services such expenditure also is part of health expenditure itself now how do we measure these health services this could be one Uh, with the monetary terms in case we count about the services that are the services that are provided the health services which are provided along with that we have got uh, the health status it could be in terms of life expectancy it could be in terms of death crude death rate the mortality rate etc but again not exactly measurable terms we will not be able to get the true health status of the country if all these indicators are well it's it's not a direct relation we can't establish a direct relation kind of thing. on the job training i have a story to share here okay my son he told me he wants to drive he's a graduate right eligible for driving he wants to drive hmm. and um, he asked me if he could drive 
on a running road he asked me mom can i please drive and i was surprised as in when did you learn driving i never taught you i never enrolled you for any of the driving school he told me that i learned it through youtube mm. and through youtube if a child is saying that the child has learned driving and should be given a steering wheel it's dangerous right not just for me but for the people on road as well mm. <laughs> hence such things which are skill based should actually be looked into with on the job training right. it definitely makes people more efficient mm. the labor when is efficient will be providing better goods and services mm. will be increasing the productivity absolutely also <laughs> the uh, updation which happens cause when you are on floor when you are working mm. at that point whatever updation happens mm. in the economy you are already ready for it mm. when corona virus did hit our country before now 2019 we never thought we teachers can also get work from home mm -hmm. now we can easily have a class on a sunday <laughs> with so many online platforms available so that on the job training we were into the job hence we were able to learn about various platforms that that did help us and our kids to keep the learning process on mm -hmm. that on the job training hence is increasing efficiency and doesn't let the thing stop at any point okay. moving on the migration now when people migrate hmm. people migrate because probably they don't get a proper kind of job which they think they are capable of or they are not getting sufficient earning at a point in time hence they migrate now when we migrate there are certain costs hmm. costs as in cost of transport there is a cost of uh, living in a new place and there could also be a cost of uh, A, a mental cost when you are shifting to a new environment now such environmental such cost such socio cultural setup me rehne ka cost and various other costs as well why should i bear it right till i don't get a better income hmm. till this cost is less than the income that i am getting i definitely am not going for a new job hmm. hence migration basically increases the income of people in this particular portion where they have migrated the area where they have migrated okay so, but uh, here if the migration is this expensive what is the need for people to migrate the cost and benefit as in the cost to move on to the new place hmm. will be less right and my job which is which i have got at a new place or the earning capacity which i have got at the new place that is more when i have more income Hmm. and less cost i am ready to go okay that way okay. moving on next is investment in information hmm. the labor market the education market the health market we generally make decisions now such decisions which we make in investing in human capital is basically for efficient utilization of human capital stock right so when we make an investment whether we should be starting a new hospital or a engineering institute or probably a vocational center if there is a scarce amount of um, economic resource available where to invest at that point in time the decisions are taken based on the information which is available right. like what is in demand what is a present situation of um, uh, the the labor force or the human resource which is actually available around hmm. on basis of such decisions right information if provided correct decisions are taken correct investment is done in the right direction makes the economy a better place okay on screen right now are the some indicators we understood four uh, five sources of uh, uh, investment of uh, human capital formation right. that is investment in education investment in health investment in uh, migration in in migration and on, on job. the job training and information <laughs> and information and on screen there are certain indicators which have been picked up uh, from economic survey of various years where you could see from 1951 to 2016 17 mm. the real per capita income that is the income of the country in real sense on base year prices is increasing and the death rate is continuously falling the infant mortality rate is also falling the literacy rate is the literacy rate is increasing is increasing 
and the life act uh, the life expectancy at birth is also increasing right they are all getting better now it's 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 not easy to prove exactly the cause and effect relationship between whether economic growth is happening because of this human capital or not but there is definitely growth in each and every sector when right kind of investment is made in education in health and other sources moving on to the new education policy see understand a small point there is big data these days artificial intelligence and various machines we have machines to take over human beings work mm. the work which is repetitive in nature right as in if there is a work which is to be done on regular basis feed in the data in the machine and the machine does it for us mm. also the machine is getting is learning each day is getting better each day so human resource will be needed to operate such machines one and to get better better understanding of what is needed next mm -hmm. so the personalized kind of jobs for which we need human resource to be ready for we have to invest in that okay and also there is a climate change coming up mm -hmm. hardcore reality pollution getting pollution is getting worse each day by day mm -hmm. there is uh, the the natural resources are getting depleted yeah. and we want our kids to be investing in right direction to get the environment better to cover up what change what climate has already been uh, destructed for which the resources have to be uh, you know diverted towards the right direction mm. the resources like human resource the raw material etc so our direction of energy the direction of uh, uh, resources has to be in, in the direction so that the the climate change the sustainable development does happen this is one thing then there is uh, epidemics coming up there is pandemic coming up for which you need a collaborative research yeah. now that collaborative research basically will be helping us probably we did come up with some solution of this corona virus as well yeah. because there was a collaborative research that did happen mm -hmm. that made our economy a little better that will happen only when when there is multidisciplinary learning as in we don't work towards only one subject as in not just physics not just chemistry it has to be the integrated learning mm. that will change with this nep right so the nep is policy nep policy is suggesting that human capital formation of india will move the economy towards a higher growth trajectory based uh, knowledge uh, with with implementation moving on human capital and human development hmm. human capital is basically the education and health as is increasing the labor productivity and when we say human development the idea of education the idea of health is integral part as in people will be able to read and write and live healthy now if i talk about human capital human beings are means to end as in they are the means to produce better goods and services but when we talk about human development human development human beings are basically they they are the at the receiving end so we are talking about human welfare so we are investing in human welfare even if it does not directly relate to labor productivity okay that is human development is there a need for government intervention in education sector in health sector in any of the sectors at all yes for improvement if i am a private enterprise mm -hmm. and uh, i want to just invest in i want to just produce a good student and by investing in um, a good hospital or i am creating a big school mm -hmm. and i'm charging the price that i want to charge okay will that be okay with the government no why not because government wants this education and health services should be moving on to everyone Right. now as we know india has three tier system hmm. as in we have central government we have state government we have local government hmm. so the education and the services the education and health services basically private and the center is also spending on it yeah. the government is also government at all three levels are spending on it hmm. also the benefits of education and the benefits of health are not just for public service 
they are having a private they are having a private benefit they are also having the social benefit hence both invest in it since both invest in it hence the, we have uh, government uh, investor government producer of uh, uh, health services and education services mm -hmm. we also have private producers mm -hmm. now there are certain rules and regulations if government is not taking care of it private people might not be adhering to the standards might not be charging a right kind of price hence government intervention is needed then we have some institutes some government recognized institutes government form formulated institutes like ncrt like uh, aicte like ugc which are actually taking care of these services in mm. education sector then we have uh, national medical commission and icmr which are taking care of the health services and its regulation now if we talk about india's skill development programs there are some skill development programs the investment the, what government has made in right in um, in skill development of the country so that the country can get better of which the flagship program is the pradhan mantri kushal vikas yojana this kushal vikas yojana is a ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship program which is basically providing the industry level skill training to number of youth to get into better so that they get a better livelihood that is skill is developed and they are able to get a better livelihood the sankalp program is um, is the program where we are uh, talking about transforming the overall skill ecosystem of india and there is a loan facility which is provided by world bank the loan backup is provided by the world bank in sankal program when we talk about pradhan mantri kushal vikas yojana the cost of training if a person is enrolled for this program the cost of training is borne by the government okay to develop the skill similarly we have udan program which is again a skill uh, training program where employability of unemployed youth of specific area now udan is for jammu kashmir youth where uh, graduates post graduates engineers etc are given the corporate exposure and corporate also in return gets a pool of people who are employable okay it's a win win for both of them so uh, is this scheme only for one state of india udan yes right now okay and when we say youth of uh, that particular state what's the age criteria uh, we mentioned um ma'am actually youth criteria in case i talk about there are 65% of people who are categorized in youth mm -hmm. and people who are um, 25 above okay we count them as youth i still have to check this exact figure okay right uh moving on to jan shikshan sansthan this is the the this particular program is basically for vocational training uh to the illiterate and the school dropouts now when we train a school dropout or a illiterate person we look into the demand what is demanded in the nearby area hmm. it could be probably a stool cane based stool it could be a bamboo pen it could be a bamboo speaker it could be anything which is demanded in the nearby area and those those uh, nearby area demand what is there the product which is in demand the illiterate youth and the dropout the school dropouts they are trained so that they also get the livelihood they also get the chance to earn better is uh, the jan shikshan sansthan next is entrepreneurship development program now this is again prime minister's employment generation uh, program the beneficiaries of uh, these uh, uh pm uh, egp program uh, is is basically they um, they are they are helped out to develop the entrepreneurship skills hmm. the entrepreneurship skills as in when they are able to um, when they are employable when they are able to cover up um, to start their own business so that they are not looking for a job rather they are providing jobs to few more people when they start their own business okay the importance or the role of hcf physical capital we need physical capital for uh, efficient utilization hmm. if we don't have a factory if we don't have a land we don't have a raw material we won't be able to use our human resource to work on it hmm. hence physical capital the efficient utilization of it will only happen if we 
invest in human capital right and situation is that when we talk about investment in human capital human capital if invested well will benefit the society as well but when it is only the private people or the physical capital if we talk about it will benefit the person or the owner of it if i own a factory if i own a building when i am working efficiently towards that particular building the income which is generated by that building will be mine but when i invest in the human capital formation when i invest in the human resource i won't be just if i'm well educated it is not just my income which is getting increased i also will be giving back to society in more than one ways so human resource investment will benefit the society in more than one ways but physical um, capital if invested well is definitely benefiting a limited amount of people the limited number of people here i also wish to say human resource if is not working on physical resource physical uh, capital if you are not working on the production of goods and services won't happen where will i work in case i don't have sufficient physical capital hmm. hence physical capital will be efficiently utilized only if we are uh, uh, investing in human resource rightly hmm. the next is it simulates the innovation if we are well educated if we are well aware if the human resources efficient enough they will they will uh, go for a better innovation the new things will be developed and the new technology will also be able to adapt more as in if i am well educated i was able to use the login ids and the um, social handles which were available to me to use to make the learning happen for my students it was basically the training that helped me then then um, the attitudes of people get modernized if they are well educated it also makes the the indicators like life expectancy gets better because when i am educated i'll be investing better in um, in my health i'll be eating better and i'll be getting better opportunities to earn so my earning capacity is also getting better hence life expectancy is getting better other indicators as well and when the earning capacity is better life expectancy is better when my uh, the when i'm well educated my standard of living in long run will also get better right. that also will happen there are some problems with hcf in our country hmm. first of all we don't have sufficient physical capital we don't have sufficient resources there are some inefficiencies in implementation of government policies as well when i get well educated when i am well trained i don't get sufficient opportunities at a particular place hence there are chances that i'll be earning better at some other place so we migrate to that place so again the brain drain is one of the major issues which we face in our country today then um, if we don't do proper manpower planning as in what kind of investment should be done in a particular type of industry for example again uh, it could be uh, engineering institute to be open up a school should be started or a vocational center to be started till we don't take a proper call on it based on the information which is provided the the plan the human resource which is available to us will probably will not be sufficiently utilized that is another problem that we face okay ma'am here uh, the problem one of the problems you mentioned was brain drain when uh, a person who doesn't get enough opportunities at one place he or she migrates to another place when we are talking about these places is it city um, is it village to city city to another city or sit, uh, one country to another country it's all of it when okay. the rural area if i if i am a person who is staying in the rural area mm. and i am not able to get proper employment opportunities in that area and mm. i don't have a land as well right in that situation i'll try to migrate to a place where there are enough employment opportunities for me to bring food to the table of for my family right hence the rural and uh, urban and the the people do migrate from rural area to urban area yes. similarly there is a kind of hub which is created by the industrialists 
Like for example, if we talk about NCR, there is an IT hub here. Yes. Bangalore again, an IT hub here. So IT professionals will be getting better opportunities in these areas. Mm. And the earning capacity of these areas will increase accordingly. Mm. Similarly, if I as an IT person, I'm not happy with the kind of opportunities that I'm getting within these areas as well. Mm. And there is an opportunity which is waiting for me or is available to me or is... Um, if I am able to think that I will be able to do better in a particular country outside India, I probably might shift there as well. So when I am working within this country till that point, yes, mm. producing goods and services which are for this country itself. But as soon as I move out, mm. outside the country, my earning goes out. Also, right. my uh, the economic activities that I do, that is production of goods, my saving, my investment, there are good chances that I probably will be shifting there. Hence, it moves beyond the economic boundaries of a country. Okay. That okay. Is. Right? Sure. Yes. So, moving further, after the problems of HCF, what else uh, do we have in store? Right. Um, I wish to talk about how we take up current challenges in classes. Okay. Now here when we are talking with the camera and with you of course, it is kind of one way discussion. Hmm. We talk, we discuss, we have a question answer round, but we don't celebrate economics or the subject that we teach hmm. in our classrooms in same way. Okay. What we do is we celebrate the subject with various ways. Like when I did talk about the, uh, the policies which government has implemented, yes. we don't do the same way in classes. What do you do? We do, as in what we do is, we divide our classes in various groups. There are some groups which are um, the ruling party government, they are in, part, they are in power right now mm. and there are some opposition. Okay. And the first, of, first and foremost is, there is one committee which wants to implement this particular program in the country. Okay. Now, when they, brain, they, when they brainstorm over what should be done, how it should be done, mm -hmm. they actually work on the figures. Okay. They Google the figures out from the internet. Mm -hmm. They look into the unemployment situation. They look into the what is demanded in the nearby area, okay. the kind of soil there, the kind of uh, available resources there. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, a plan is being developed by the people on the table. Okay. After that, once they implement, there is an opposition to counter why this particular plan, how much will you spend over it, and okay. there is a debate going on, a continuous debate which does happen between these two parties in the classroom itself. Okay. So we don't have to teach students about the program. It is their discussion and their research which brings out the learning for each and everyone. It sounds like you create a mini parliament in your classroom. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> it does happen when we talk about the um, government policies. Okay. And it stays as is for rest of the chapters of current challenges as well. So do they uh, come to any conclusion at the end? They do, definitely. Okay. There are definitely not, um, not everyone is on same side of the table. There yeah. definitely are some people who are not okay with what kind of uh, decisions are taken by the students who were in charge of it. Hmm. But in both ways, they respect the other person's uh, decision and they try and come to the other side of the table after five years, after the next chapter, because this role play does change every chapter. Yes. Hence, other side of the table, they are able to understand what problems will be faced when they are the ruling party now. Hmm. This is one way. Next is, for some chapters, um, we do theater workshops as well. Okay. And uh, what we do is, we give certain kind of roles hmm. to different kind of people. Say hmm. for example, uh, we are in a rural area hmm. and there has been a kind of policy which is implemented hmm. and this, the awareness campaign is to be created for that particular rural area so that everyone is benefited out of it. Okay. Now this is hardcore information which is available on internet, hmm. uh, awareness program is created and there is one group of students who is a, is a person who is at the receiving end. Hmm. What questions probably that person will be asking? How to apply loan? What kind of loan will be available? What kind of papers to be completed? Mm -hmm. If I have to get enrolled in a training institute, how will I do that? All that kind of questions which go beyond book. Not every time all questions are answered, but most of the times we do get to some additional information and the students are able to understand not just the program, 
but also how to apply loan what are the papers they have to get ready for these kind of informations are also provided to the students there are some ex at times we are not able to answer everything so we call the experts from outside we also go for skype lectures and we um, talk to the actual in charges mm -hmm. we have taken for um, there are times when we take our students to the landfill areas there are times when they have talked about sustainable development is not just one thing where we have to teach them this is there in the book and this is a chapter and this is a definition they actually have to work towards it mm. that actual working when happens they understand the three r's very carefully they understand the absorbing capacity of the environment very carefully and the learning happens okay. this is one way then we also go for in case i in case i talk about the last slide on uh, the uh, the screen right now these are two news items okay and we create certain kind of padlet screens flip grid areas where the students have to un have to read these research paper if i talk about the first paper this is a working paper and uh, this is presented by navin kumar from uh, university of california and by vinita by in in uh, university of illinois chicago and they talk about they compare the nep 2020 in our country and how the similar kind of uh, policy was implemented in china they compare what is there in the paper they check the google what is in stored from where the research did happen and they present their views over it now when they present their views regarding how nep should be implemented they are well aware they are well educated now they are ready to receive whatever comes in the policy and they'll be able to understand and implement it as well when it comes to cause these are grade 12 students they'll be in graduation they'll be going to colleges so when they are entering that kind of arena where they are now graduates and post graduates will be at the receiving end and will be able to understand exactly what is needed by the floor how should be they, how should they be training themselves on similarly there is a wef report which says india has slipped to 135 rank in gender equality we have been talking about gender equality in our uh, books as well and it is getting better definitely state wise gender equality is getting better in our countries as well the wef ef report is saying something otherwise where was a gap this gap to be studied from the actual sides every time we are presenting any of the table like i did go through one of the table here where the table is showing us that these data this table is picked up from ncert book itself and the source of the table is economic survey but hardly our students actually visit the economic survey for it Okay. the niti aayog figures for it now when i show this particular table and ask them to actually derive it from real picture from mm -hmm. the actual books from the actual uh, economic survey pages they'll be able to understand how this data has come up and they'll be able to question not just the figure and the data mm -hmm. they'll be able to go beyond book and understand this too this is how we go on with various kind of strategies along with that we also go for say for example uh, if it is first three chapters of indian economy which we have to talk about cause indian economy is what we are discussing today mm. uh, for first three chapters we had our group of students who were uh, presenting the complete chapter in form of uh, a theater a theater series small scenes were taken up and each group presented a small scene along with that the learnings from it now if for example i talk about the uh, pre independence era and there are students who are telling exactly um, how the the textile industry responded and how uh, various industries responded to the britisher colonialism so in that situation one is the scene is depicted once the scene is done they take a chair yes. and they have to answer why they did what they did okay what they went through now if in lpg policy if the government is taking certain decisions mm. now the decision taken by the ruling party why were they taken what actually happened was there any other way out if there was no other way out how did we reach there it was a very interesting incidence once when one of the group it was a smaller group as in we didn't had a complete class in that group it was science students 
and they actually depicted in form of theater because they were given open option on how to present those three chapters what they did was uh, they presented economy in a courtroom and the economy is asking questions why did i reach this situation which i am in in 1991 such kind of innovative ways or learning ways do come up with our students when we celebrate economics in our classes so this is how current challenges goes up okay so these are really interesting strategies that you do in your classroom to make them understand the whole concept okay any other thing any other strategy you would like to add see um again um, we start our day with one news item a day okay this is one news item is which is related to the topic which i give them mm -hmm. through padlet screens through flip grid areas where they have to present their ways there is one news item which each one of them is having ready and any random person comes up and tells the latest whatever news item did whatever news did happen anything important which mm -hmm. will affect them now okay. economics is one subject which is a real life subject where anything that happens anywhere will be affecting the economy right so such news items are having um, are discussed in the classroom with open minds okay that help our students to not just stay updated with what is uh, happening around them hmm. and it also goes a little beyond book so do you recommend them to read one of the economic papers they do that they do that on their own okay so economic papers live wind news and whatever is happening around them they come up not just for uh, the country they go on with the because it's not just our country we are not in a closed economy anymore yes. hence whatever happens around us hmm. are definitely discussed okay. they are come they are countered in the classes okay okay so one news item they are already ready with and one you provide and then the discussion happens the discussion happens one and when the news item is provided by me mm. that particular news item is generally the subject related like okay. the two two news items which we did mention here mm. this kind of news item there are certain questions which are based on this complete news item okay. now on those uh, based on those questions mm. they have to give some open ended answers mm. they have to read the news item carefully and answer some questions which are related from the book itself okay. this is one way we cover our subject which is we prepare our kids for our uh, exam for our regular national assessment as exams as well mm -hmm. also they go a little beyond book this is how it does that's great okay so and uh, this was a very interesting uh, you know conversation on a uh, human capital formation and uh, like you said that economics is something we uh, can't disassociate uh, you know ourselves from okay anything else ma'am you would like to add See, let's talk about let's talk about the two news items here. Hmm. Say, for example, if I have to create certain questions on um, maybe a second news item which is on screen, that despite improvement, India slips to one thirty-five rank in gender equality, and this is a report given to us. where india ranks 135 in gender parity indices index comprising 146 countries as world economic forums report only one in five countries were able to bridge the gap by at least 1% now if we talk about this kind of news item there are various questions that can be asked from student one they have to understand the gender equality what exactly it is how was uh, how did we reach 135 uh, 135th rank we actually did not started with 135th rank there must have been some journey some something must have happened then we that we are right now at uh, 135th rank so did we improve in gender equality did actually some changes happen post independence when our government were playing some role what all steps were taken what all government policies were taken and what was the effect of it what were the problems that were faced by the government by the country in implementing those policies and why we were not able to reach exactly the target where we did ask for if there was improvement why did we slip 
was some other country doing something better that we did not do because of which we are falling back these are some kind of questions which come up in the discussion and the news item is given to them before the class hmm. they come up in the class with certain questions on day one the next day the questions which are finalized we discuss them they have to present a paper or <coughs> or they have to present in form of a padlet screen it could be um, a audio it could be a video it could be a paper presentation some people who are some students who are good at writing they present the papers on it what were their observations some students actually talk about what has happened various students pick up various topics and each one of them present their view over a similar item mm -hmm. hence once it is a 2 minute video from a 30 students or a 50 students definitely we are all in, um, enlightened over this topic and we are all ready to face whatever kind of questions comes up over this particular topic okay. this is how we do okay so they are prepared uh, they are fully prepared uh, for right. that topic then how they present it is the next question hmm. while presenting it we use uh, certain screens like for example um, we used to have the white boards in the classrooms yes remember those boards where we used to paste whatever comes up in whatever the students are submitting mm -hmm. we present that in form of a uh, proper board is prepared right yeah. now we are using padlet screen these days okay. there are other uh, uh, similar kind of applications as well mm -hmm. but padlet is what i am presently using okay. now padlet screen helps me it's a kind of a wall it's a free application available on play store so mm -hmm. any teacher any um, um, any educator can actually download it and create a wall there now when we create a wall it could be in form of shelves it could be in form of the way we want to there are four kind of templates which are available students when they want to um, upload a video there it's mm -hmm available we will be able to upload a video mm -hmm. if we want to upload a uh, say audio we don't want my face to be there but i want an audio to be uploaded the complete answer along with the question is uploaded in form of a, a audio screen there there are some students who present it in form of a word text which is not plagiarized plagiarism test happens once it's clearing that plagiarism test it is uploaded the response is uploaded and good thing is i am able to review it and give an answer there itself okay so that complete wall which was earlier in the classroom is now available digitally mm -hmm. everyone is able to access it from wherever they want to mm -hmm. and they will be able to provide a feedback like each other's video they will be able to give a better view and learn better with whatever item we select to present okay so when you say everyone is able to access that and uh, give a review or feedback on it so that means they can share that file with other students of other classes and uh, other schools as well i have a control over it because okay. the person who is creating it mm -hmm. i want only my class students to be right now um, giving in giving a look into it or uh, reviewing it or understanding it when i want that particular padlet screen to go public hmm. we take permissions from our management and then we are able to do that as well now once it is public it is shared on social media handles as well and uh, we also share it with our uh, sister concerns and rest of the schools for uh, their learning as well that also does happen so okay. the control is completely in uh, in hands of educator because there are some topics some uh, privacy items which we don't want to be shared with everyone right in that situation we can also create a we convert that uh, padlet wall once it's done to a pdf uh, it could be archived it could be shared some things could be added removed and then shared for uh, public view that also can happen okay okay keeping it for archives for the next year students yes. that's a good idea actually right okay so that's for the presentation part and um, anything else apart from that uh, other than padlet we also use uh, the classrooms we use uh, the assignments that i have to share with them i share it through classrooms that also does happen and uh, for uh, for the boards the white boards that we were using earlier in our classrooms now that has been replaced by the e boards e boards is like uh, when i'm teaching this particular screen can be shared with our uh, students and they can also write an answer they can also add up the values there okay. similarly we also go for uh, 
minty meter we go for minty meter is a kind of uh, feedback way where they are entering their answers and the answers get uh, displayed on the screen itself we have got flip grid ways flip grid is again an application which takes up the uh, videos of the students now when there is a particular item say for example a similar kind of news item which we have shown flip grid gives an um, a review to it so we are able to add that as well okay okay so these are certain great strategies i'm sure the teachers who are watching the educators who are watching they're going to implement the same in their classrooms as well for the better understanding of the concept and uh, why not if it's amazing thank you so much ma'am for being with us and it was a great conversation we thank understood you, so many points from you and uh, the human capital formation itself is a huge topic and you tried uh, to take up certain things thank you so much for thank giving you, us your time Thanks thank so you much. Thank you to all the viewers for watching this program. I'm sure you liked it and it was very interesting. If you have missed it for any reason, then please watch it again on NCRT Official. That is our YouTube channel. You can watch it anytime, anywhere and you can even share it with other friends of yours. So that's absolutely free of cost. And this was the economics chapter for all the 12th class students, human capital formation. And... Uh, Today we are wrapping up our sessions, our programs here only, but on Monday we will come back again with more programs, with more subjects, with more topics. If you want to know the details, the schedule of our programs, then please visit our website that is Swayam Prabha or CIET and you will get all the information over there. So for the entire week, the information is present over there and you can uh, choose to watch the topics, the subjects of your choice, of your standards. So that will be very easy for you. Please take great care of yourself, stay healthy and keep on watching PME Vidya channels for all the understanding of your topics and of your subjects. Thank you so much once again. Namaskar.